We're now going to look at adding the vertical geometry to our curb returns. To do this we'll just restore our views and we want to just drag our cross section view up to be half the size of the screen and our design view to be the other half. We can then set our vertical exaggeration to be 20 times and profile KR1. There is a macro inside 12D that automatically calculates the vertical geometry for a curb return and that can be found under Design, Apply, Curb Return. We start off by giving it a function name. In this case we'll call it KRET for curb return, KR1. Inside the panel we want to click on Pick All and it starts off by asking for the start grade string which will be the alignment string for road number one. The end grade string will be the alignment string number two. The start height string is the lip of curb along road one and the end height is the lip of curb on road two and obviously the curb return is just the curb return. If we then click on apply we can see that 12D creates the vertical geometry, uh, it calculates the grade in and the grade out from the strings and then puts a back-to-back -back curve with an equal length. We can now do the same thing for KR2 so we start by profiling the string, we change the name to KRET KR2 and click on pick all. This time the starting grade string will be alignment string number two the ending grade string will be alignment string number one. The starting height string will come from road two. The ending height string will come from road number one. And the curb return, of course, is once again the curb return. And we can click on apply. Once again, 12D creates the back to back curve with this equal lengths. We can now zoom out and zoom in on curb return number three. Once again, we profile the string and inside the panel change it to KRET KR3 and click on pick all. This time the starting grade string will be the alignment and the ending grade string will be the same alignment. The starting height string is the lipper curve on the left hand side and the ending height string will be the lipper curve on the right hand side curb return of course is the curb return and we can click on apply to create the vertical geometry. We can now finish on this panel. We have a bit of a problem with the vertical geometry of the cul-de-sac as the grade past the end of the cul-de-sac is not taken into consideration so around here. So we need to use an option that allows us to create an envelope from this point out and we'll regrade this string manually. We can find the option under the road toolbar under road widening. We can start off by giving it a function name and the function name we're going to use will be KR3 widening. Before we can start anything else we need to select a reference string so we just pick on road 2 and we'll just change the model name so that they suit our naming convention better and we'll call it KR3 Widen Min and KR3 Widen Max. We don't need to worry about any of these options inside of here however we do need to give it a minimum crossfall so we'll use a minimum crossfall of 2 and a maximum crossfall of minus 5 our maximum width, well we need to go out further than the radius of the cul-de-sac head which is 9 meters so 15 meters should be fine and a section separation of 10 would be fairly useless in the small area so we'll set that to 1 meter. We're going to widen out both sides not just the left side and our start and end change, well the end change is the end of the road the start change we're just going to go to string from point change, select our alignment string and then just select the last cross section. Once we've filled the panel in we can then click on process 
and you can see it creates an envelope of cross sections. We can finish on this panel and turn on the models KR3 widen min and max inside our section view and you can see that the envelope has been created and our head of our cul-de-sac should run in between these two sets of cross sections. The envelope gives us a good guide out on the edges here but we still don't know where 3% from the centre of the road to the end of the cul-de-sac is. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit our alignment string. So on the super alignment tools toolbar we select edit and then pick and accept our alignment string and if we open up our parts data go to the horizontal click on the third part the fixed line and we'll just extend the relative end by 10 meters and hit set. We also need to extend our vertical geometry so if we click on the vertical part go to our last part and insert a new one we're just going to insert a line fixed point and grade and inside our long section view we still should have road number two so we'll just zoom into the end our point is going to be the last point that we created click on that and accept it and our grade well we want our cul-de-sac head to be as close to three percent as possible so we'll put in minus three a relative start will be zero and a relative end will be ten we click on set we can finish on the parts editor but we still want to keep our super alignment open because we don't want to save these changes and eventually we'll get out of it and just quit back in our cross section view we can now turn on that model alignment and what we're trying to achieve is that our cul-de-sac head will come down stay between this envelope of minus two percent minus five percent and pass through this point here which is minus three percent and come back up through the envelope to achieve this we want to edit the cul-de-sac head so we click on the edit super alignment and select our cul-de-sac head inside the parts editor if we go to the vertical geometry if we have a look at our starting grade we're at minus 0.5 of a percent well if we change that to minus 0.1 or minus one percent and hit set you can see it automatically it creates a little bit of a dip which starts to get us down into our envelope and we do the same on the other end change that to one percent and hit set we can now modify our free compound curve here and change it from a free compound curve to a free parabola and the point we want to pass through is this point here and if we click set you can now see that our cul-de-sac head, the vertical geometry of our cul-de-sac head passes through our envelope and fulfills all the criteria required of it including hitting 3% at the top of the cul-de-sac head. We can finish on that. We can save and finish curb return 3. As for road number 2, we don't want to save any changes we made there, so we can undo that and we continue undoing it until we get to the point where it says no more to undo and then you can quit out of it. One of the problems with what we just did is if we recalculate curb return KR3 we would lose all those changes. You may notice that inside the curb return box we have the option to clear the vertical geometry and we could tick that off but because we changed the start and end grade to 1% and minus 1% then it wouldn't help us. So instead we're going to lock the function so it can't be recalculated. To do this we go to utilities, functions, lock. Pick on the function kret kr3 and tick on the lock mode. Click on set and finish. To check that we can walk right on recalc and select kret3 and you'll notice the output window will flash 
and down the bottom it says it is locked against recalcs. Prior to finishing we can just reset our views 